Hello everybody, this is Rama Sambatur here with the Yokogawa Corporation of America. Today we'll be taking a look at how to navigate and use the channel display settings. These are the settings that will allow a user to view a measured input on a variety of display options available to be viewed on the main data display screen of the GX or GP data recorder. First, we'll quickly access the menu by selecting the menu button on the front panel of your data recorder. Then we will go to the browse tab, then the settings tab. And here you will see the analog input channel, the digital input channel, digital output channel, and math channel settings. Within one of these four input channel settings, you will locate the display settings. Specifically, these are the channel display settings as they will allow you to customize the visual appearance of the data recording done on the trend displays or bar graph displays based on the inputs plugged into the data recorder. In this case, we'll go to the channel display settings of the analog input channel settings. Once you enter the display settings, you will notice the channel selection. Here you're simply selecting the input channel for which you will manipulate the measurement display settings. For example, if we have a thermocouple hooked up to channel 1 of the analog input card, we would select channel 1 to manipulate the way the measurement readings display on the trend displays. Under the tag menu, the user can set the characters, in other words, the label for the measured input parameter that appears on the measurement display, as well as the tag number, which are labels for inputs that appear on trends or graphs. You can simply manipulate these by clicking on them and changing the fields as required. Here we can quickly take a look at how these tags appear in the digital displays on the top right and as well as on the graph as you scroll through the history. Going back to the menu, Under the color setting, you can choose 24 preset colors for the trend or bar graph display options for any input value. If you check out the advanced settings, however, you will see that we provide RGB sliders that allow users to have full control to customize more complicated or complex input configurations. Moving on to the zone settings, here you can set these values when you want to divide the waveform trend displays such as the one we've just seen in the trend display into separate zones so that the trend displays do not overlap. Set the lower and upper percentages to a percentage less than the upper and set the zone width to be 5% or greater. For example, if we have three different thermocouple inputs all measuring three different temperatures of three different objects and we would like to see each of their trends divided vertically within the same graph we would select the first thermocouple input to take up a zone of 0 to 30 for example scroll up confirm that this is the first thermocouple save then we select the second thermocouple, which is the color green on the trend. Set this from 30 to 60 percent because the first input took up the display from 0 to 30 percent. So we would go from 0 to 30 to 60 percent on here. And then the last. You can divide as many, you can divide the waveform vertical display in how many times as you would like, but in this case we're only dividing it three times for three separate inputs. So we, the last division we goes from 60 to 100% and save all these settings. And briefly go back to the trend display and look how the waveform display changes. Before, as you may have remembered, all of the waveforms were along with the singular line right here but now as you can see we set 
the first waveform of input of channel one from zero to thirty percent so it occupies zero to thirty percent of the waveform display the second one occupies zero to sixty percent or thirty to sixty percent and the third waveform display that we allocated takes up from sixty percent to hundred percent of the vertical space and if you notice the remaining display the remaining trends in the background take up zero to hundred percent because we have not assigned to them any space so theoretically we could also divide up the waveform vertical display into many more dividends to accommodate for the remaining inputs now let's go back to the channel display settings quickly moving on to scale settings scales as you can see we'll quickly go back right here you can see show the range of measurement in specific units in this case these are reading voltages as you can see at the top right here at least the first four input channels are reading voltages channels five and six brown and uh, yellow are reading temperature so your scale will be able to give you the range of measurement and you can set the scale positions going back when you want to display one or more scales on the trend display you can use also the division option to set the number of divisions you want to make within the main scale mark so if we select eight scale marks and three let's save and head on back you'll notice that we have multiple scales that are each divided into eight separate divisions Lastly, under the bar graph menu, you can choose which section of the graph is visible in either the vertical or horizontal bar graph orientation. Similarly, you can also further divide the sections of a bar graph using the divisions option and choosing how many divisions you would like there to be in a single bar graph. You additionally have the choice to select between lower, center, or upper to view those particular sections of the bar graph within the display. Here we'll quickly take a look at how the bar graph would look. First go to menu, browse, and then head to bar graph right here. And you can see as we saw the four different inputs on the trend graph, you can see them again in bar graph form. Here channels five and six, and you can divide up these markings further. And you can also display this in the horizontal orientation using those settings. And finally, within our channel display settings, we have a few different customization options for the color scale band. So if we head on over to the band area option, the band area option simply enables a user to highlight sections of a scale for highlighted viewing purposes. So for example, if we select the in option and select, for example, green, and leave the range from 0 to 1.2 volts on the scale and save and head back to our trend graph you will notice that each scale for the respective waveform display so this scale covers from 0 to the max range of this red display because remember if you can recall that we attributed 0 to 30 percent of this display for this graph you will notice that 0 to 1.2 volts have been highlighted as per the in designation within the color band area. Whereas if we select out, this will highlight every part of the range besides this selected range, for example. So if you notice on a certain scale, since we're only dealing with channel one, only channel one scale is affected. Whereas if we deal with channel two, then we would also change this channel, but right now we're only dealing with this. So if you notice, if since we set it to out, the parts of the range not highlighted are selected. So this helps, this would potentially help a operator 
to quickly tell if certain parameters are being breached using a visual indicator. And that's why we designate these ranges with the display position lower and display position upper values, which you can enter manually. And lastly, we have the alarm point mark. This simply enables a user to enable the GX to show on a trend where alarms have been set off. As you can see, you can have the alarm type or fixed type and indicate on a trend historically where alarms might have been set off for a particular input. And just to quickly run over the display settings, the most important part to understand is to learn to select the particular input channel for which you would like to manipulate these settings as you would have to individually configure the zone settings, the bar graph scale, color scale band area settings for each separate input plugged into the GX in all four of these input channels such as AI display channel, digital output channel, and math channel settings, they will all have the same channel display settings. Please experiment and see how the GX responds to the different customization options available. And that is a brief overview of the GX channel display settings. Please refer to the Yokogawa catalog of video tutorials for more information. Thank you.